At least I know I'm a moron. And then they put that poo in their mouth. <laughs> Did anything happen in the world this past week, Scott? World War Three is coming every week. Coming on my phone. I'm Bridget Fettesy, and this is your dumpster fire for the weeks of October 8th to October 21st. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. 2023, the year of our Lord. Oh, Depending. we're bringing God into it now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a holy war going on. So join us at Fetacy.com for the unedited version of Dumpster Fire. You will get not only all of the stuff we cut out and just the raw dogging Dumpster Fire, you will also get a community of people. You'll get workouts with the ladies if you're a lady. It's awesome. It's the best way to support this not a new show that you believe in so much and our community and us so that we can keep doing this. We're doing a book club now. You can be part of the Fetacy Book Club and who doesn't want to be part of that? We're reading Bowling Alone for those of you for our first book. You can also join at bridgeoffetacy.substack.com. So if you're a Substack person, you get the same stuff. Just subscribe to one of your favorite places. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Touch my bells. Touch my bells and buttons. Even if they don't work, it's important that you support our cause. The most important thing you can do is tell someone about us. Honestly, that's how most people find out about us is just word of mouth. Be like, hey, you don't trust the news? You want to get your news from not a news source that comes out every couple of weeks <laughs> from a frumpy aging 45 year old in a media room in a suburb of Texas? Whomst amongst us doesn't want to try and digest these heavy, important atrocities of the global situation <laughs> with this moron. <laughs> Capitalism always wins. Ding, ding. Victoria's Secret ditches prioritizing wokeness over sexiness after sales drop. Oh, wow. No one wants to see fat algos in lingerie? I'm shocked. <laughs> News flash. News at 11. <laughs> Even people who are fat uggos don't want to see fat uggos in lingerie. <laughs> it's true. They want to see like the hot chicks in lingerie. What's wrong with that? Nothing is wrong with that. <laughs> Although we've been made to feel shame for thinking people are hot. Victoria's Secret is realizing that you can't masturbate to courage. <laughs> Victoria's Secret is now sponsored by Ozempic. Victoria's Secret's now like the girl who was like a cocaine model and then she had to get off the coke and she gained like 50 pounds when she was in rehab because all you do is eat sugar. And and then she was like, hey, can I be a part of Victoria's Secret? And they were like, maybe, but you got to gain some more weight because you're not chubby enough. And then she did and then went back and they were like, sorry, you're, now we're going back to being skinny again. You've got to lose that weight. And now you're going to see all the models slowly losing weight. And, and going back to coke. Going back to Coke, where they belong. <laughs> the Victoria's Secret one runway is now a treadmill. It is like full circle. Victoria's Secret used to teach the boys of the world, the young men of the world about sexiness. Now the world has to teach Victoria's Secret. I mean, Rihanna just destroyed Victoria's Secret. There's nothing that they're going to be able to do to come back from this. Maybe they can bring the angels back. There was a great line in the story, and it was basically summed up as... What got a lot of applause on Twitter didn't sell any lingerie, which to me represents like the entire problem with America right now. Moving on to canceled. Canceled. Orwell is canceled. Well, at least George Orwell has podcasting to fall back on, <laughs> which is where we all end up. Yeah, this was a funny story, basically. I think it was a tweet that was going around saying that his characters were racist and misogynistic. News 11, <laughs> George Orwell was a white man in the 1940s. <laughs> just kidding. They weren't all bad. Some of them fought Nazis. I just think it's funny they're trying to cancel dead people always. This, I mean, how Orwellian is that? <laughs> you smart. Okay, a yacht for every pleb. Turning the tide, the sustainable future of super yachts. (laughs) 
<laughs> it just hurts my head. It's so dumb. Today's super yacht owners are younger and more in tune with the climate change around us. And that's why they're buying super yachts because they know water world is coming. <laughs> It's not because they're going zero car. What is a zero carbon yacht? They're just like, actually, we've neutralized our carbon footprint by using slaves who row our boats. <laughs> we just have hundreds of, hundreds of slaves down there. We've gone back to galley slaves, guys. <laughs> We're taking TikTokers and putting them to work. <laughs> the boats are run on the steam of the poor's tears. How does the Senate vote? F*** the poor! Good. They want us all dead. <laughs> Speaking of global warming, let's check the weather with Susana Alameda. Se encuentra sobre el Golfo de México, generando bastante humedad hacia los estados del noreste, oriente y sur del país, provocando fuertes lluvias. Así que hay... Thank you, Susana. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons. Tell your friends about us. This is where you get all your astute analysis on the Israel-Palestine situation. <laughs> A regular old newscaster from the days of Walter Cronkite. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a dollar store, dollar store Walter Cronkite with cleavage. <laughs> Not even Walter <laughs> Cronkite. We have added a new category this. I week. look like I was purchased at the dollar store. <laughs> you look today. like you're about to go shopping at the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> When I get ready for dumpster fire, I'm like, <laughs> what outfit gives me the least amount of credibility? Yeah, you've got your like 90s hoops and your your velour sweatshirt <laughs> with your cleavage shirt underneath. Cleavage lingerie. Uh, <laughs> plus the high pony. I mean, it's a look, man. <laughs> the high crimped pony. Your hair's so crimped. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're looking for credibility. This is where it, you it, it ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> we right. named it dumpster. I know. Fire. The new category this week: Gen Z discovers. <laughs> Gen Z is doing a lot of discovery <laughs> these days. Gen Z has discovered silent walking or taking a walk without your phone and listening to a podcast or audiobook or music or any of that. <laughs> Gen Z discovers birds and just debates whether or not they're real on TikTok. Like she said, her boyfriend told her to do this. Yeah, he challenged her to take yeah. a walk. So we know your boyfriend's over 40. Good, good times. What are they going to discover next? Cursive? Letter writing? <laughs> Taking pen to paper? <laughs> I mean, I felt old, but nothing makes me feel older than Gen Z discovering things as if they're, like, mind-blowing. It's like, like going back to Egypt and realizing that they had the same tools that we had for surgery. <laughs> you know, they're like, did you see this thing that they do called walking silently? Up next, Gen Z discovers their inner monologue. A person is living inside them. <laughs> what are they going to discover next? Eye contact with their neighbors? The touch of human skin? I mean, hopefully they'll discover sex. <laughs> doesn't seem like any of them are doing that. No AirPods, no podcasts, no music. Just me, myself, and I, she said in the video. And at first I was like, no, my anxiety could never, which is probably what you're thinking. But something within me was like, let me just try it. The first two minutes of the walk were mayhem until she hit a flow state. And then suddenly you can hear yourself. Gen Z is we, we talked about flow state in my day. Flow state was like when Michael Jordan was in at peak performance or Kobe Bryant or an athlete or someone doing something really extreme or they're they're composing something beautiful. Gen Z is like I I walk alone with no with no device and I hit a flow state. What? And the irony is, too, they're doing this 
taking a video of themselves walking, uh, talking about silent walking. Yeah, you're not silent walking. You're still mediating it. It is weird to observe the generation that has been born into technology. I feel bad for that. What struck me was the fact that she was like, no, my anxiety could never. I'm like, you're you can't just be alone with yourself in silence and go for a walk. But this is the whole thing of like kids can't be bored. Here we are, kids. The Grand Canyon. It's so old and boring. I want a new one now. They're they're used to we had to be bored. We had to like sit in the car and look out the window and drive. We didn't have devices. We didn't have videos. We had to stand in line and we couldn't look at our phone. We had to do things where we were just bored and had to be bored. Wow. And they have never had that. Wow. So they literally have never really had to be alone with their own thoughts. Wow. Yeah, there was another woman who discovered the Lilith Fair, which was hilarious. <laughs> so I recently discovered that there was an all-female music festival from 1997 to 1999, and I am shook to my core. It was called the Lilith Fair, and it was founded by Canadian singer-songwriter Sarah McLaughlin. You know her? Arms of an angel. Chef's kiss. <laughs> I'm old enough to have gone to the Lilith Fair, hence my awesome outfit. <laughs> this is really what I'm trying to tap into, like my kind of wanting to be a lesbian 90s self. Yeah, that Lilith Fair video was hilarious. Discovering women play music. Gen Z. Tell Maggie in the comments what Gen Z is going to discover next. That'll be a good one. They were like, all of the artists were women and some of the shows were even sold out. <laughs> Here is the original poster. It says that the just completed Lilith Fair was a 35 city music tour with half of the concerts sold out, which is wild. Like people want to listen to women. They want to listen to female artists. It's funny, though, how that's like we did live in kind of the glory days of uh, it was like a weird time where everyone was just pretty chill. And they're, it, it just shows me how much like the patriarchy so crafty made its comeback. <laughs> That they're like, oh, my God, the Lilith Fair of today would be taken over by men. <laughs> yeah, it would be dominated by men. Uh -huh. It would just be like, hey, I'm I'm identifying as a woman, so I'm going to be in this lineup of all women. <laughs> I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait <laughs> for the world to be over. I don't want to wait. A new Toyota. That needs to be a song in, in our musical. I just, for some reason, saw me looking out a window. I don't want to wait for the world to be over. World War Three is coming every week. Coming on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the Gen Z character with lots of anxiety. <laughs> Dumpster diving. What's next? In the dumpster. <laughs> a Florida man could face jail time for alleged erectile dysfunction drug ring. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read the story, but I just imagine a dude in a, like a Hawaiian shirt when, in a golf cart rolling around the villages selling <laughs> like with a trench coat over his, his Hawaiian shirt selling like Viagra to the olds. Yep. Pretty much. But he had like a whole ring. It says ring in the in the ring. Yeah. In the uh, like two other olds yeah. that he met at pickleball <laughs> shuffleboard. No, they play pickleball now. Do they? Yeah. You don't have to be in shape to play pickleball. Oh. Then we just have Rodney. This is a comedian, Chelsea Lynn. She did this hilarious video that is freaking amazing. Just chef's kiss. So funny. She's so funny. It's so it's so well done because you think it's real. Yeah. And you're like, what is it? you're like these poor people? And no, then, it could very well be real. I mean, the curio cabinet bit is just <laughs> perfection. <laughs> and then he kicks my freaking curio cabinet. OK, here's the deal. She loves her little figurines. OK, show him the one that he broke. Show him what. Let me have it. This is her favorite little figurine. Look at the little eyes. Look at the little, little eyes. Rodney was leaving. Broke off its tail. The, the tail curled up. He fucking broke it. There's the tail. Look at the little tail. It cannot he broke be that. glued back. It cannot be glued back. 
<laughs> well, we're going to play the whole, are we playing the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, we're just going to run the whole video. This because will be our internet is glorious at the end of the episode. Breaking Bridget. Oh, I bet you can all guess what this one's going to be. Israel suffered the most vicious attack on Jews since World War II. Okay. I have no idea how to cover this. I'm going to start with my bias, which is that I am pro-Israel. We'll start there. Israel has a right to exist. People all around them want to eliminate them. When you ask somebody who is yelling from the river to the sea what that actually means. You're committing genocide! They usually say it means the eradication of Israel. Israel does not exist. They generally don't have a great idea of what happens to the Jews in that case. And that is unsettling to me. I I would like to lead with that. Again, full disclosure, I am in a moron. I'm I'm viewing this situation as an American. I've never waded into this discussion because I know I don't know the history of it. And there's a long history, thousands of years of fighting and holiness and God and things that I don't understand. And so I've never waded into it. All I know is that uh, when I see 1,400 people brutally massacred, my instinct is to react strongly to that. And it was horrific. Just the, the largest instance of Jews being slaughtered in one day since the Holocaust. So there's that. But then there was the reaction to it which was insane. You had people before Israel even responded while they were still collecting the bodies and they took hostages, 200 hostages almost. Hamas took hostages. Well, they're cleaning up the wreckage of this and trying to figure out everything that happened. There are people celebrating and excited. And I know people say they don't, they weren't cheering. They were cheering all over the world. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, this isn't about, this is about the politics in Israel. Why are Jews everywhere afraid? Why do they need armed guards at their schools more than double the amount that they normally need? This is um, an ancient hatred that seems to have been activated. And Watching people like seeing BLM post a poster of a paraglider. There were paragliders who flew into a rave and were massacring 260 people and seeing them use that image on their posters. That would be like post 9-11 using planes as you're like, hey, it's like a recruit. It's crazy. This is like terrorist you would be arrested for recruiting terrorists if that was something you were putting out post 9-11. Yeah. It's fucking bonkers. And then just seeing the campuses. This week we saw everyone who disagrees with me as a Nazi other than those Nazis who happen to share the same views as me. I think this guy has the same mindset that I do. Yeah. And the Nazi flag. Whoa! <gasps> no! <gasps> no! Look, there's so much to this story. There's so much happening and it's unfolding as we're talking. We could very well be in World War III by the time this airs. I feel like Dumpster Fire is like just documenting life before we enter World War III. And I'm not pro-war. During the Iraq invasion, I was one of those teenagers or early 20s who was very against it and didn't trust the media and didn't think it was a good precedent to get into war. And I know that governments lie, governments use money, governments are corrupt. That still isn't an excuse for me to abandon my principles of fighting for people who are democratic and trying to have freedom and democracy. I can separate myself from my feelings about all of these governments and come back to the human feeling of fighting for principles that I believe in and also fighting anti-Semitism everywhere I see it, which is everywhere. But I do think 
and again, this is my own bias, Israel has a right to defend itself. Everybody's like, oh, calling for ceasefire. Okay, well, Hamas needs to stop bombing them too. They're still freaking firing rockets at them. They're just, uh, why is Israel, why are they the ones who are supposed to just be polite, like polite in war? It's so crazy to me. And you can call me a neocon. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm a neocon. Maybe you live long enough to become the thing you hate, which is a freaking neocon. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Maybe that's just the trajectory. Or you can call me a warmonger. I'm not. I hate war. But I do also, more than war, hate dictators and hate autocrats and hate people who keep their population in fear and murder journalists and push people off balconies and have nothing but ambition to eradicate democracy and freedom and hate women as much as Jews often, free women. So I will support trying to defend that if we if we can. Because in the absence, in the vacuum, what's left? Some of the arguments are so childish too. Like, go learn fucking Mandarin then, okay? If you're going to be like, we just need to shore up our defenses and be put our heads down and be quiet. All right. I agree. We need to take care of our... There's a lot of shit going wrong here. We need to pay attention to America. But I also don't think we cede our role as as someone who's fighting for democracy. I don't know. It's gotten really ugly online. I think a lot of people are have been really overstimulated with the imagery and the stories that have come out from all sides and also not just from Gaza, but also from obviously from Israel. But then there's old stuff from Syria that like Ilhan Omar retweeted a picture of dead kids and it was actually from Syria. So dead baby Twitter, I understand if you are a Twitter user and you or dead baby X or whatever you want to call it. It, it's it's a lot right now. You do have to take care of yourself. These images are horrific. They do do something to your soul if you consume too much of them. I personally am having a hard time balancing, you know, what is bearing witness to atrocities and what is rubbernecking. I think that's a that's a hard distinction to make as a human because part of you is like, well, I can't turn away. That's how the Holocaust happened. And that's how I don't want to I don't also want to be blind to the suffering of people in Gaza. I don't want to ignore atrocities, even though it's weird, too, because there's like nine thousand people just got slaughtered in Sudan. And that doesn't get it. This story gets outsized attention anyways. And it's a lot of propaganda and it's a lot of propaganda from all sides everywhere. And it's very hard to know what is true and what is not true. I encourage everybody to up their media literacy, which means pause. So just pause, pause. If you're taking in too much and you're getting too, uh, it's disturbing you too much, log out. Everybody needs somebody who loves them enough to say it's time to log out. I was reading something the other night. I burst into tears and Jaron was like, you need to log out. So Take care of yourself in this and know where your limit is and know there is like that human nature. That's why people slow down when there's a car accident. There is like gore porn is a thing. There is this. It does become like war porn. You know, there's something icky about it, too, when I'm scrolling and seeing all this imagery. And then every, people will be like, oh, this is AI generated. We don't know what's real and a lot of the things that are real are being said that they're not because now you can just say that and and then it borders on Holocaust denial and and I'm seeing in real time how Holocaust denial happened because it's happening and I'm watching smart people's brains break and I would guard yourself from trying to fit everything into the box of your own worldview because like I'm I'm very clear about I why I started with what my biases are is because I I have to know that that's how I'm filtering everything. I have to go out of my way to read things that push against my biases. And I also have to go out of my way to not let 
too much of the emotionalism cloud all of my reason, which is, it's very hard to do right now. And I also have to know where my principles are and stay grounded in those things. It's horrible. No one wants babies to die. Like no average person wants any babies to die. Israeli, Palestinian, Syrian, that the normal human response is to be like, this is fucking horrible. And that I think is where most people land is like, I, this is horrible. I was on there the other day and I was like, the biggest idiots in the world are on this site. Why? And I include myself in that. Why are we here? Why? We are more. I've watched people make arguments that are astonishing on that site. At least I know I'm a moron. Everyone in America needs to step one, admit that you're a moron and you don't know as much as you think. This is how we recover as a nation. Okay. And this is my big defect of character is I actually like can't turn away from watching someone lose their mind online. And it's bad. And then I recognize, like, I'm on there, too. I can't be separated from yeah, this. Yeah. I, to think that I'm any different than anyone on there is to be a crazy person. Because only crazy people are in X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it. I feel like a crazy person who's like, maybe my meds are working that day, watching a crazy person eat their own poo <laughs> and being like, all right. I was crazy once. They put me in a room. I'm I'm somewhat enjoying watching this person eat their own poo. <laughs> I just had a sheer morbid <laughs> fascination. <laughs> I just watched them poop out of their butt. <laughs> and they put it in their hand. And then they put that poo in their mouth. <laughs> and they're eating their poo. And I'm watching it with some sense of weird... Morbid curiosity and <laughs> an enjoyment. Is there a recognition like, <laughs> that on the day, like you didn't take your meds, you might think that poo looks good? <laughs> I mean, maybe I I could be eating my poo <laughs> two days. I'm in the same war. <laughs> Fetacy news. Fetacy news. Join us at fetacy.com or bridgetfetacy.substack.com to get the unedited version of Dumpster Fire the day before the edited version launches for free online. You get all of the jokes we cut and all of my rants and me being ridiculous. And there's actually quite a lot that we cut out all the time. There's going to be a lot in this episode. There's going to be a lot in this episode because I went on a long tangent and I still know nothing. It's also the best way to support your favorite Not A New Show. If you want to keep up with everything that we are doing, join our free newsletter, bridgeoffetacy.substack.com. We will send you links to all of our material every single week-ish. I've been off for two weeks, but my bad. I'll be back. Thank you to Dave Yates, Better Fetacy, Sammy Flaps and Folds, Ben Howe for editing, writing, and researching, and just generally being the crew I can rely on. I could not do this without any of them. Please find them online and follow them wherever they are available and buy some of Dave's Ha Ha Hot Sauce. He is a comedian and also makes amazing hot sauce. Go to hahahotsauce.com and get yourself some amazing very usable hot sauce. Thank you to our sponsors this week, Sheath and Vita. We also can't do this without sponsors. If you want to sponsor, please email us weeklydumpsterfire at gmail.com. Thank you, Cousin Maggie. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you to you, our audience, supporters, subscribers. We can't do this without you. Thank you for subscribing, joining, commenting, hating, loving. I love you. I love you all. Even the haters. Reminder, we will be releasing episodes every other week until the end of the year so that we can do some other stuff and also just catch up on life. And now to cleanse your palate. The internet is glorious. Where is Rodney? This message is for Rodney. Okay? Listen up. All right? You blocked us both on Facebook you, and you blocked us on Instagram and, and TikTok. TikTok. Okay? Now, now listen. I want all of our friends and family to share this because he thought that's the last he saw of us. Guess again, okay? You gonna break her heart? I'm gonna break your jaw, Rodney. Okay? I ain't messing around. I'm looking for you. 
You was at the casino all night with mm -hmm. Tracy. I know you mm -hmm. was. He was. And I get my uh, an alert on my phone that says, all your SSI check is gone. He okay. took it and he spent it, he Crystal. He spent it all night with okay. this gal. And tell and him what he did. I said, hey, Rodney, you need to get the heck on out of here. She called it quits, broke up with him. And then he kicks my freaking curio cabinet. Okay, here's the deal. She loves her little figurines, okay? Show him the one that he broke. Show him what, let me have it. This is her favorite little figurine. Look at the little eyes, look at the little, little eyes. Rodney was leaving, broke off its tail. The, the tail curled up. He fucking broke it. There's the tail. Look at the little tail. It cannot he broke be that. glued back. It cannot be glued back. He can't. He didn't just leave with respect when she ended the relationship. He had to kick over her churro cabinet and broke three of her figurines. My grandma gave this to her a week before she died. Okay? This is your favorite he figurine. He broke my other, my little uh, precious moments one with the little girl that was... Uh, praying and had her head down. And he thinks he can uh, block us and then he ain't, got, he ain't got to deal with us. Well, guess what, Rodney? I went to your mom's house because I knew that's where you'd be and you weren't. She said she hadn't seen you. Number one, I think she was fucking lying. Number two, I whip her ass too. And please, everybody share this on a Facebook. I wanted to see it. Everywhere. <laughs> Anywhere you can share it on a GoFundMe My blood's side. boiling. My blood's boiling. You know what? I got something for you, Rodney. Here, Crystal, hold that. Hold that, Crystal. I got something for you. Hold that up for me. Okay? I got something for you. I got two things for you. Okay? Right here. Tanya Tucker and Conway Tweety. Okay? This has been your dumpster fire for the weeks of October 8th to October 21st. I'm Bridget Fetessy. Now, make me